Today, there's speculation that Trump's attorney general could be his former enemy, Ted Cruz, after Cruz was seen exiting Trump Tower yesterday. Apparently, reporters are just hanging around the lobby of Trump Tower making guesses based on who walks in and out the door. <laughs> My money's on attorney general pizza delivery guy. After <laughs> Obama began his final foreign trip in Athens, Greece, while back at the White House, Joe Biden held his final toga party at the vice president. <laughs> is about to become the oldest woman to fly into space, and this is pretty amazing. She's going to do it without a rocket ship. <laughs> Look, cartoon uh, the Donald. How can the next president of the United States embrace a leader who kills journalists and jails political opponents? I don't do that. Do I? I don't. Uh, those reports are lies, and uh, anyone who says otherwise will be jailed. You just got that answer from him. What? No, we're just good friends. We're, we're so close, we finish each other's... Elections. <laughs> I don't know. You know, the animation was um, kind of interesting. Not even as good as Herman and Catnip, uh, Catnip back in the day. Anyway, uh, you're back now on America Talks Live, and we welcome your calls at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Headlines and punchlines we just saw. I offer my critical evaluation of that innovative thing from, if you want to call it innovation, on the late show on CBS. But we have innovative guests right here alongside me on the anchor desk, our friend Nancy Brinker. Uh, and from Newsmax Washington, why it's David Keene, who is now the uh, editor of the uh, Washington Times editorial pages and the author of the new book, we're getting this in for you, David, Shall Not Good. Be Infringed, The New Assaults on Your Second Amendment. Still got to remain vigilant, even though Hillary was given the heave-ho. Tell you what, gang, since the name of the program is America Talks Live, let's get right to the phone calls. And first, from deep in the heart of Texas, Plano to be precise, Caroline is on the line. Caroline, welcome to America Talks Live. Well, thank you for letting me uh, call and talk. And first of all, I want to thank you very much uh, for being there for the United States and for, for bringing uh, good, informative information on your program to the American public. Uh, the night I stayed up till 2:30 that night watching the election because I wanted to make sure that President, I mean, excuse me, Donald Trump got uh, Pennsylvania. Now and he you did. know, had you been right here with us, we called oh, that yes, thing at 1:39. We were the first guys. As soon as he was over the top, it was my privilege to say that Donald John Trump is the 45th president of the United States. So we're glad you're here today. Caroline, uh, any questions, any other comments for us as we uh, turn to our uh, panel? Well, I appreciated just watching uh, you uh, t talk about the uh, president, the ex-president of Mexico, uh, because uh, we uh, we need to get that wall built. We really must get that wall built. Yep, absolutely. We have got to have uh, uh, because here to four. Uh, the immigration law has not been enforced. And Nancy, this will shock you, but it's time for true confessions. Yes. During my days in Congress, when Vicente Fox was president of Mexico, and he shows up trying to tell us about our immigration policy, I offered a two-word response. You're not going to like this as chief of protocol. I would never <laughs> say this to you, Nancy, but to him I said, shut up. <laughs> You've got a country to run. We've got a country to deal with. You deal with yours. Don't tell us how to do our own immigration policy. David Keene, that's been the biggest problem. Mexican <laughs> presidents down the line, they come here telling us what should be our border policy. Well, you know, if, uh, if we adopted their immigration policies, they'd really be upset because they make ours look like nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, you can't go to Mexico as a non-citizen and get a job without being arrested. Uh, you can't do any of those things, and they're very strict about it and very serious, and yet they think they should be able to come here uh, and do whatever, partly because they get money remittances from these folks that come here, mm -hmm. and partly because it, uh, uh, it so serves as a safety valve down there. But uh, uh, it's none of, it's none, and, and Vincente Fox is probably the most arrogant of the bunch. Uh, and um, 
I'm glad you told him that. Yeah, and he got even worse, Nancy. But yeah. I know it's a family show, but he dropped the f bomb, and I'm not talking about family love really? uh, toward Mr. Trump. But oh. that's that's what happened. But but you know this this is the thing. Diplomacy calls for, and you know this also. Not only is having been the ambassador to Hungary, but also in your protocol job, there there are certain boundaries. Sorry for the pun but certain things you don't want to cross and trying to tell another sovereign nation what right. its policies should be, right. no. And diplomacy is really about just respect, self-respect and respect of whoever you're meeting with. And you're right, people are entitled to have the laws of their land the way they want them within reason unless there's huge, you know, terrible things going on in the country for which we can reach out a hand and help. But ordinarily, these are their rules, their boundaries, their goals, their culture. We don't have a right to change someone's culture. Culture and sovereignty and phone calls here on America Talks Live at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. Let's go to Florida. Janice is on the line. Hi, Janice. Good afternoon. How are you? Doing fine. What's on your mind? There are sources on Facebook that say that Trump ended up in the final tally having well over 300 um, electoral college votes and that he actually did want, win the popular election. Is there any way to verify that? Because I'm not hearing that from anywhere else. The best, and, and there, there has been, especially about the popular vote, there's been some concern that, uh, that some of the sites are putting out misinformation. The best thing that should be done, and David, I'd like to get your thought on this, make sure every vote is counted. We have service people overseas, dependents over there, casting their votes. You've got a lot of states. You you cannot stop counting absentee ballots. And I think this is very important, David, because you know what the left is going to say. They're going to say, well, Hillary won the popular vote. We need to get rid of the Electoral College. So every vote needs to be counted and, uh, and needs to be made public. Your thoughts, David? Yeah, the uh, the left is, uh, is, is sort of ironic. Remember months and months of talk on the major networks about how there was no way Donald Trump could be elected because of the Electoral College because she had a lock and he had a narrow path that he'd have to weave through to get there. The, the Electoral College then was a great thing. And then when she lost, oh, my God, we had, need to get rid of the Electoral College and just turn the, turn the government over to California and New York. Uh, you know, every vote should be counted. And then there's the problem of the votes that are counted that shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if we're going to have a public that looks uh, at our elections, we have to accept them as fair. That's why the country works. That's why we have a peaceful transition in this country, unlike other countries, because we have faith as a nation and a people in the outcome and the results of our elections, which means that we have to count all the votes that ought to be counted and we ought to make sure that we're monitoring so that we don't count a lot of votes that shouldn't be counted. And we've heard reports, Nancy, mm-hmm. upwards of 3 million illegal ballots may have been cast, even with Trump winning the presidential race. You take a look at North Carolina. They're taking incumbent Republican Governor Pat McCrory. They're going back now. There are reports that some of these ballots well, are very suspect mm-hmm. that came in on behalf of Democrat uh, challenger well, and Attorney JD. General Roy Cooper. Yes, sir, David. There was a study of the 2008 election by some university uh, academics uh, on extensive polling with non-citizens who voted to find out how many there were and where they were and all this sort of thing. Uh, and they determined that uh, it, is, it is absolutely true that in a wide election, uh, fraud won't turn things around, illegal votes won't turn things around. But it was their estimate that in 2008, Barack Obama carried North Carolina because of non-citizens voting in that state. It was very close, as you'll recall. Uh, And the the other outcome that took place was the election in which Al Franken won the Senate and became the 60th vote on Obamacare. Yeah, and of course, there was another scam going on up there. There was another scam going on up there, David, and that was allowing felons to vote. And I don't even think the law had been changed. It was a a snap interpretation. (laughs) The guys behind bars say, yeah, we watch Al Franken. He's Kind of, he's not much of a comedian. Maybe he'll be a better crook yeah. in the Senate. You the, know, J.D., yep. I, was the, I was on a panel the day before Eric Holder uh, resigned as attorney general in New York on criminal justice reform. And the only thing these folks were interested in anymore is getting, the, is getting felons the right to vote. Uh, and uh, the attorney general at the time said, you know, that's one of the reasons for recidivism, because we, can't, we don't allow our, our, our offenders, our felons to vote. <laughs> and I said, I don't need a, I don't need a study, <laughs> Mr. Attorney General. I just need you to name one person 
who robbed a 7-Eleven because he couldn't vote for the school board president. <laughs> a great comeback. <laughs> the final word goes to the dear lady here. Observing protocol, Nancy Brinker, your take on where we are and where we're headed. 30 well, seconds. Well, I think we're headed in actually a pretty good place if we have some patience and we, uh, and we exercise our democracy and we make sure that people feel uh, that we are going in the direction that they were promised by President-elect Trump, which it looks like we are. Drain the swamp and really drain it and start over again and bring a lot of interesting, young, smart people into our uh, governance I think we're in a good place. Well, it is a good way to end it. David Keene, Newsmax Washington. Nancy Brinker here on the Anchor Desk, host of Conversations with Nancy <laughs> Brinker. Thanks, Nancy, for conversing with David and me. We Thank really you. do appreciate it. Now, when we come back, more of your calls, plus we'll talk to a former Trump surrogate. Stay with us.